Thailand is one of the toughest nations in the world to be a political artist. Five years of military rule and repressive laws have stifled free expression. As the nation goes to the polls, One on One East meets Thailand's rebel artists, fighting back against the generals in a desperate battle for democracy. Rap Against Dictatorship is making Thailand's military face the music. Fed up with the status quo, their song, What My Country's Got, slams corruption, military control and a social divide that's grown since the army took power here almost five years ago. Thai authorities threaten the rappers with jail, but the track went viral, connecting with the public frustrated that the generals postponed the elections five times. Since its release in October, the songs had close to 60 million views. <laughs> The number of hits the song got kept us safe from the hands of the government. Will this set an example for others to follow? That I can't say, but we created a momentum and discussion in Thai society. We did it and survived. Hok, Tay and Art perform in the 10-member group. What has changed in Thailand that has fueled your popularity? I think it's about timing. Our work went viral at a time when it hit the government the most. They've shown they can't improve the situation and people are upset. In 2014, after Thailand's 12th military coup, the army cracked down on freedom of speech and banned public rallies. Reporting here at the time, I saw soldiers swiftly stifle even the slightest acts of resistance. I don't, I don't pushing people back. And there's not much you can do except take it. Where, where are we going? This way? Since then, laws which protect the military and monarchy from criticism have been used on an unprecedented scale. Hundreds of activists have been prosecuted. Even venting frustration against Thailand's rulers online is now a jailable offence. I know many people who have been charged and arrested. My father was taken to a military camp for two weeks. That made me very angry. The rappers say they'll continue to release more tracks, but with carefully composed lyrics to avoid censorship laws. Political discussion is good, and it should be free. No one should fear being arrested or getting thrown into jail for talking about politics. It's not just the lyrics of their hit song which attract controversy. The music video revisits a violent chapter of Thai history. The brutal massacre by state forces of more than 40 demonstrators at Thammasat University in 1976, who were protesting the return of an exiled former dictator. They've recreated a Pulitzer Prize winning photo of one of the protesters being lynched, reminding audiences of past military abuses that went unpunished. The authority try to to hide this kind of the image from the, the new generation. Renowned Thai photographer and filmmaker Manit Triwanichpum said radio reports of the massacre neglected to even mention that any protesters had been killed. Even they don't they don't put in a history textbook because they know that this symbolise the spirit of the, the the people who fighting for democracy. 
the massacre forms the basis of his Pink Man series, which he says explores how Thailand's consumerist society so quickly forgets the horrors of the past. It's one of the most violent in the Thai political history, and people remember that. This is why they, uh, for any, any government, they are afraid of that. Manit owns an art house cinema in the capital, Bangkok, but he can't screen his own film called Shakespeare Must Die. Banned in 2012, the film retells Macbeth in a modern Thai context and refers to the Tamasat massacre. Now Manit's appealing that ban in the Supreme Court and will use rap against dictatorship's portrayal of the massacre to bolster his case. It's so obvious that this is injustice. If this, uh, the rapper can use that and can, can, can show people what about us. Despite the massacre, students at Tamasat University have continued the tradition of anti-establishment activism. At the main campus theatre, comedians are ridiculing a deputy police chief, notorious for making inflammatory comments, as well as Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha, the general who led the coup. In the audience sits someone who knows what it means to suffer for your art. Pontip Mankong was jailed in 2014 for acting in a play about a fictional monarchy at this university. Our play is very dangerous for, for them because we talk about something that they don't want people to know about that. She says nine lines in the play were considered disrespectful to Thailand's monarchy, falling under the country's Les Majest laws. She was safe for a while, but when the military came to power, Pontip and another performer were jailed for two and a half years. They must control the people. We have to make confession when we got arrested because under the military, we will not win the case. This is the real life that you have to face with the threat of the military. While some of her fellow performers have fled into exile, Pontip has hit Bangkok streets. Not to protest, but to perform, as she says theatres won't risk working with her. I think the military or the police, they will think that I will not be on their state anymore, that I will not make some artwork anymore. But why I will not do that? Because I know the power of art. Because I saw, I saw the fear of the military. That's why they put me in jail, because they fear. She's chosen a popular weekend market to stage a play about her life in jail. Porn tip counts to 189, the number of inmates she was confined with. Former prisoners like Pontip are banned from politics for a decade, so she ends her show by polling the public. She asks onlookers to tick yes or cross no using lipstick on her body. This pop-up performance is one of the more unusual things I've ever seen. The public approve. Oh, 
The security guards, not so much. You like to break the rules, I feel. Yeah. Yeah? And yes! <laughs> On the surface, Thailand's cosmopolitan capital, Bangkok, doesn't appear oppressive. New galleries and trendy culture districts have created a bold contemporary art scene. But some curators say under the current military government, they operate in a climate of fear. In downtown Bangkok, Somrak Silla runs a local gallery and bar known for its political exhibitions. Do you think since the coup happened in 2014 that censorship has become worse? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, a lot of art events, performance or you know, visual art, you get the soldier come and watch you. They make sure that you do not express any opinion against them. It's worse than ever, I think, yeah. For her latest exhibition, Somrak is working with a visiting Portuguese artist. She says almost all the outspoken local artists went underground or fled overseas after the coup. The, the function of art changed at the time. It was not serving as a tool for criti criticise society. The general elections due in late March have created a new urgency for political art. But Somrak is cautious. The army will remain a powerful institution here because new constitutional changes have stacked the vote in their favour. I want to provoke, but I'm also scared to do that. You have to be, well, obviously careful and smarter. You cannot do anything that's straightforward. All the message that you want to deliver, it has to be more layers, more dimensional. Yeah. One piece in today's show questions whether Thai elections will be democratic. It's a hollow ballot box. When a vote is cast, it ends up on the floor. Are you concerned um, on days when you hang things up? Do you sometimes think to yourself, am I doing the right thing if, <laughs> because of the laws? Constantly, yeah. The whole week that we've been working together, that's all we talk about and we keep changing the, the idea. We are really, really nervous. I couldn't sleep. We, we keep changing and then we are afraid that we will lose the message <clears throat> that we intend to deliver. Hours before the show, Somrak decides to make changes to some of the pieces. What do you think about all these changes last minute that you have to do? She How says self-censorship here is rife because of oppressive laws. You have to self-censor. Um, because you know that you can get into trouble. That's, that's, that's all I can tell, yeah. So this is the exhibition that got you into trouble? Artist Tara Hengsap Kul knows what happens when you don't self-censor. In 2017, the military's response to this artwork sparked fear across Thailand's creative scene. If you hold them like a friend, your warmth will reveal the portrait of a person underneath. So we learn what happened to them. Each piece is painted with thermochromatic dye. When touched, it reveals the image of a Thai political prisoner. These are people who either died from political unrest in recent years, or are still imprisoned, or live in exile, or were kidnapped. Why do you think the army was so interested in your exhibition? Each of the artworks shows a victim the government wants forgotten. Because of that, the government wanted to take down my work. Alerted to his exhibition by media coverage, the army turned up to his show, but Tara was not there. I was shocked. When the army asked to see me, I started to feel scared. I was thinking, what would happen if they show up at my house? What will happen to my parents and me? The soldiers also entered a gallery next door and removed seven works by another political artist. 
whose exhibition looked at a military crackdown in 2010. With the situation escalating, Tata told gallery staff to tear down his exhibition before the army returned. I don't want to become one of those victims, just like those shown in my artwork. After the first visit, they continued to show up at the gallery for three months to check, sometimes on motorbike, sometimes they came undercover. I've not held any exhibitions in Thailand since then. Despite growing censorship, Bangkok recently held its first Biennale. One of four big art fairs sanctioned by the military government in the past year. Temples, shopping malls and old heritage buildings all became exhibition spaces. But for film director Manit, the Biennale exhibitions lacked political punch. I don't see any issue that uh, create a, a real dialogue. None of them really critical to the current situation. And then at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, the festival be, uh, become like a, a decoration. Yeah, all, all in all, you know, it's, it's really That's something the curator of the Biennale, Dr. Apinan Posyanon, rejects. He says he could address sensitive issues like Rohingya refugees, migrant sex workers, and southern Thailand's insurgency, because the expo is largely privately funded. First of all, I, I must say that if this uh, Bangkok Art Biennale is fully uh, sponsored by the government, we would not have many contents like I mentioned, whether it be insurgents in the south, or sex migrants, or sensitive issues. We would have to go through a lot of self-censorship. Some critics say that big biennales are a, a PR stunt for the military government. What do you think about that criticism? Critics, I respect them. They, that's their job. They, they have to criticise, otherwise they're out of work. We feel that it's, it's the event that we plan uh, and it's been going. Lucky for Thailand, you know, we have many events ongoing and people should be appreciating this, uh, PR stunt or not. Dr. Appanan knows the censorship boundaries well, after years working in the Ministry of Culture. It's exciting to, to get away with censorship. It's like uh, it's a cat and mouse game. Does Thailand really need a board of censorship? Well, uh, the, the sentinels, you know, the, the people who protect the morals, uh, they also have to, to learn you know, what, what, how the world is moving. You know, you, you, you can't have, you know, Neanderthal views. I'm not saying that they should do away with the Bureau, but the Bureau must adapt. They must, sorry to say, grow up. On the streets of Bangkok, graffiti artists are finding ways to push the censorship boundaries. Meet Headache Stencil. He's trying to stay true to his name. I know the things that I'm doing and I'm going to do will cause so many people headaches. The masked graffiti artist satirizes the army on walls across the country. He also posts pictures of it online, spreading the message even further. From critiques on bloated military budgets at the expense of education, to a swipe at a famous general over his undeclared luxury watch collection. Not even the Prime Minister escapes his wrath. Hello, Stencil, Drew from Al Jazeera. Hi. Thanks for making the time to chat with us and meet us. How about coming inside and have a chat? Thank you. I've been taught that dictatorship is evil. They told us that they'd staged a coup because of this and that, but I just know that dictatorship will never be good for any of us. That is why I stand up for myself and to do something about it. The current government has stayed longer than normal. I've seen many military supporters are now unwilling to support them. I think this is a turning point. Headache Stencil is hard at work, creating his latest piece, 
checkmate. He has to be careful. Despite his efforts to remain anonymous, the authorities eventually found him and he was charged with petty vandalism. To navigate the challenges of working here in Thailand, Headache Stencil only paints on private buildings with the permission of the owner. It's helped him avoid being jailed under the censorship laws so far. If one day they want to throw me in jail, there's nothing I can do. The only one I can blame is myself for letting these people take over the country. One thing we should all learn is that military coups are never the answer. Once again, he has the soldiers in his sights. What is the meaning behind this stencil? I did this stencil of a soldier standing guard to show how they stop people standing up. Is that their role? To prevent people from speaking up? As Thailand's elections draw near, there's a record number of candidates. But the generals who staged the coup will most likely hold the upper hand. Regulations enacted during their rule ensure no single party can win a parliamentary majority. And the new Prime Minister will almost certainly need the votes of a military-appointed Senate. For artists, this means freedom of speech may still prove elusive. We are nervous, yeah. It could go back to where it was before. The whole election was set up for them to still, you know, uh, be in the power. It's, it's scary and it's exciting at the same time, yeah. In general, the suppressive society, uh, the more suppressive, the better art it come out. But they might keep uh, creating it, but probably will not show it. Today, we're back at Somrax Gallery. She's launching a new exhibition about the election with headache stencil. Upstairs, the artist and his team are racing against the clock to get it ready. I don't know very little about this um, exhibition. We basically just let him use the space because he's been rejected by a couple of galleries um, because of the content, obviously. He knows his, his audience and he, he, he's um, really uh, followed the news very closely. So I, I think he knows what he's doing, yeah. She says Headache Stencil embodies the youth resistance sweeping Thailand. He has the most courageous to, and super um, audacious and really straightforward and he's not scared at all. Hours later, he unveils Casino Thailand, a raucous election extravaganza, crawling with corruption, cronies and cockroaches. Two titans of Thailand's intractical political divide stare each other down across the poker table. By engaging young people with art like this, Headache is trying to shake up the system. I think this election could impact the next 20 years, but it's like gambling, an important bet, which is why I chose the casino theme. Wow. There's such a big youth vote, they can vote in 20% of MPs who could potentially make a lot of changes. And at that point, it's going to be fun. While a lot of the stencils look towards the election, I see a throwback to the past. Looks very familiar. The Tamasat Massacre. I think a good art exhibition should, should, comp should be comprising of uh, the history up until today. It should give you the, the background of why we are today, how, how did we get here. And I think it, it's, it's a right, right move for him to do it. She hopes it's not only the youth who are inspired by Headache Stencil's art. Can we do this yet? I think for, from this show, um, more artists or more people who work in this field will feel more safe to do it. It's kind of set the good example that if you feel courageous, you should do it. Nothing certain in a nation that's had a military coup on average every seven years since the end of absolute monarchy. 
But Thailand's rebel artists are betting that carefully calculated acts of resistance might slowly help steer the country towards democracy.